Can you get a programmer job after solely completing the CS50 course? Is it worth to take a CS50 course? Whether the course is still relevant in 2022? This is CS50, Harvard University's introduction to the intellectual enterprises of computer science and the art of programming. Hi guys, I'm Evgeny Lisev and today I want to share with you my thoughts and experience about the CS50 course from Harvard University. If you are thinking at this point whether you should take the course, whether you should invest your time in it, what kind of opportunities you are going to get after completing the course, is it still worth to take it in 2022 and you are still not entirely sure Watch this video till the end and I'm pretty sure you're gonna get all of the answers to your questions. I have done a CS50 in 2020 and it took me in total six months to complete the course from the scratch till getting a certificate from Harvard. Frankly speaking, just the very fact that I can study at Harvard just as any other student, but absolutely for free instead of paying an insane amount of money, was a complete shock for me. I thought I absolutely must give it a try. I have to say that I had no prior experience before doing the course, so I can tell you with the eyes of absolute beginner how it felt for me to do the course. Now, if you already have some basic understanding of programming, like you know what a for or a while loop is, you understand the B call notation, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't take the course. In fact, quite the opposite. But let's deal with everything step by step. First of all, let me answer a few questions which might be very relevant for you at this point. Can you get a programmer job after solely completing the CS50 course? Strictly speaking, no. The reason is, you don't really get any deep knowledge in any specific field of programming, which is normally required for you to become a programmer or a developer. You rather get a broad vision of this universe of programming than a narrow spectrum of practical skills. Now, before you get disappointed, I guess I have to answer another important question. Namely, is it worth to take a CS50 course? And here my answer is a clear yes. Exactly for the reason mentioned earlier, you get an understanding of how programming works. Or, in case you already had some prior experience, you dive deeper into this universe of programming. And if your goal is to become a full-time developer one day, then CS50 could be an excellent first step for you. CS50 team themselves say that you need to complete a CS50 course plus one additional course, uh, which is rather specific to be able to apply for a job. And the third question I want to answer here is whether the course is still relevant in 2022. And once again, the answer is definitely yes. The course never remains the same. Even from the time that I took a course in 2020, it improved a lot, becoming even more fascinating now. The tasks are even more entertaining. And of course, the course is very up to date to the current trends. Nowadays, no matter what you do, whether you want to become a software developer or not, understanding how programming works is very important for you. It's a must. It's beneficial for you in many ways. I personally didn't want to become a software developer before the course, and I don't want to do it afterwards. But it still was an amazing journey for me, and I never regretted the time I spent on it. Now, I want to share with you my experience, thoughts and tips which should provide you with some clarity what CS50 is, what you should expect out of it. Hopefully it's gonna inspire you to take the course and knowing my setbacks, you're gonna make more out of this course. You're gonna complete it more efficiently and more effectively. I guess now is the best moment to say thank you to the sponsor of this video who made it possible. Wait a second. There is no sponsor in this video. Nobody cares about me. But if you want to support me and if you want to make sure that more people can watch this video if you found it interesting and useful, please hit the like button. Now we can get started. First of all, you get really inspired by an amazing team of the course which does a huge job to guide you through the whole course. If you have never programmed before, like it is a case for roughly two thirds of the course takers, programming might seem like a completely new world for you. And it really is. Like during the first few weeks of the course, I was like, okay, what's going on here? 
But feeling this incredible effort from David Mullen and the whole team, I certainly had a desire to grasp the concepts and deal with all of the tasks. I have never seen such a dedication to the work like it was with David. He literally gives all of his energy to the course. And you feel it in every lecture. You feel that you can't go wrong with him. The entire team also does an amazing job to accompany you through the journey. Even though the problem sets can feel very tough at some point, you never feel stuck thanks to the incredible amount of video and text instructions. If you still get completely stuck in the process, a great community of the course can come handy for you. Thousands of people go through the same journey as you do. It's silly not to use it. When I ran out of ideas what can be wrong with my code, I went to Discord, which has a dedicated uh, topic to each uh, problem set, and I based my solution, and within a few hours I got a few suggestions how to improve it. Just remember not to overdo here and not to copy-paste ready-made solution. It doesn't make any sense. This course is for you to teach you how to code, not to teach you how to cheat. Also, you get much more satisfaction when you get this course in the end of the day, knowing that you really earned it. Now, let's take a look at the structure of the course so you get some feeling of it and hopefully some inspiration. Week zero is a great way to start the journey. It's like a kindergarten before you go to school. During this week, you program in Scratch, which is not overwhelming at all, but you get a first impression what you can expect going forward. In the week one, as well as in the following weeks up to week five, you get familiar with the laws of programming on the basis of language C. Now, it's definitely not the easiest language to start with. It's rather low level, meaning you literally need to say the program what to do. You don't get a lot of things for granted. I personally struggled a lot with C. To get some help, I took a book called C for Absolute Beginners and learned it from the very beginning till the very end. If you're gonna struggle in the beginning as I did, it's my recommendation for you. Even though C is really complicated, I guess it's the right way to start this journey. Because if you start with something more beginner-friendly like a Python, of course you're gonna get less headache, but chances are you're gonna end up writing the code without real understanding what those lines really mean. So when the course uh, continued with Python on week 6, I was really mad at uh, David at first when he showed how this task which I spent a lot of weeks working on in C can be made literally just with a few lines of code in Python. I was like, come on, why on earth would I spend so much time and effort there in C if you can do it such in a simple way in Python? But then I realized that it was really needed to learn it the hard way, so now I understand what's happening there in Python. Getting back to this part in C, I could say that the course starts pretty beginner-friendly in the first few weeks, but then it's getting complicated and weeks 4 and 5 were the, definitely the hardest for me. So if you are maybe currently stuck with it, I highly encourage you not to quit because it's gonna be easier afterwards. During those hardest weeks, it's very important to put a lot of effort in it, but at the same time it's essential not to overdo. Like, I spent the whole days solely on programming, mainly trying to understand why the code I wrote doesn't work. But with the time, I realized that spending so much time on a single day doesn't really bring me anything. It's not efficient, and in fact, it only demotivates me, and I was about to quit the whole thing. But then I figured out a rule that really helped and finally allowed me to make some progress. Namely, working with the course two hours a day max. And you know what? It really helped. It completely shifted my perspective from constantly thinking like, damn, why can't I solve this? Why am I so stupid? To like, okay, I have done a really good job here, two hours of deliberate practice. Now let me make a quick break and continue my day with some other stuff. My brain got an opportunity to rest this way. And next day I came back refreshed, motivated to work again, and pretty often with a lot of new ideas. So I managed to make a progress and move through the course. So my point is, it's not just about the time you spend learning or practicing. You know, how much elite work you produce equals the time you have spent on the task multiplied by how intensely you focus on it. And at some point, in my case, after two hours of work, it didn't bring any value anymore. It wasn't useful. Instead, it just drove me crazy. Anyway, starting from week 6, you're getting much more fun with the course.
Now, with some understanding of how programming works, Python simplifies your life hugely and you're amazed uh, with how powerful it is. Then, you also get a chance to learn SQL, which is personally my favorite thing out of the whole course, just because how clear and logical it is. And once again, you get a feeling of how things work in the case of SQL, its databases. Finally, you get to know web development. Here, you kind of combine everything you have learned so far, and with the help of new instruments like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you get a chance to create something on your own. And it's really a moment of realization, like before you were collecting a lot of bricks without really an understanding what you could do with it. But now, when you're creating your final project, you get a lot of aha moments, and with the help of those bricks, you can now build the whole house. It's a very powerful and inspiring feeling. Of course, this house might not be perfect, might not look very professional or very fancy in the beginning. That's okay. But the most important point, it's your house. You have built it on your own. And from now on, you have an unlimited space to improve your skills. I hope you're inspired now to give CS50 a try. If it's the case, here are my tips for you. First and most important, subscribe to my channel. Wait, can that help you to complete the course? Well, you can find a lot of videos to help you stay focused, motivated and productive along the whole way. Like, around 10% of the people starting the course actually make it to the finish line, so make sure you're one of them. Tip number two. Plan a block of the time every week to work on the course. Remember, what's scheduled is getting done. Tip number three. Take one step at a time. When you first look at the problem set, it might be incredibly overwhelming. But once you divide it to the functions and then the functions itself maybe further on, it doesn't seem to be that impossible anymore. Tip number four. Get help if you are stuck. You are not alone in this journey. Take advantage of the huge community behind the course. Tip number five. Focus on the process. Don't be obsessed with performing all of the tasks at all costs. Instead, just practice it consistently and with the time you're gonna get the result. Tip number six, don't give up. As tough as it might be throughout the process, have a belief that in the end of the day, with enough of deliberate practice, you're gonna achieve your goal. If you are thinking though that you're not good enough to be successful at programming, I highly encourage you to take a look at this video to discover a shocking truth about what success really is. There are a few more questions that we need to answer about the life after CS50. First, whether it makes sense to pay from $100 to $150 for a verified certificate from edX. I would say no, I got a completely free certificate from Harvard itself and I am pretty satisfied with it. I have completed the course just before my masters started in Germany, and I have to say the knowledge and the skills I got throughout the whole course definitely helped me, whether it was my studies or during my work as a student research assistant. So, the good thing after CS50 is you have the foundation now and you can go into whatever direction that is interesting for you. CS50 team as well has some more courses for you, which are once again absolutely free. For example, they offer a very promising web development course. I will leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. By the way, if you want to take a look at my CS50 final project, it's there for you as well. I hope I have been of service to you today. I wish you a pleasant journey in the universe of programming. But before you jump right into it, I highly encourage you to watch this video, which is gonna boost your productivity hugely, so that you can finish the CS50 course much faster.